Hello, it's Ricardo, and I'm playing Sea of Thieves on the Xbox One. So, this was released a couple of days ago, and I love it. I really, really, really love it. Now, in the industry, there's been quite a few comparisons trying to be made between this, for example, and other open-world exploration games, such as No Man's Sky. Now, that's like comparing spaghetti hoops and baked beans, in my opinion. And while I sort of walk through my thoughts on this, I'm going to attack a stronghold. As you can see, I'm having varying degrees of success with the skeleton horde here, and I do die a few times. So before I get cracking with that, if you haven't already done so and you like what you're seeing, why don't you click that subscribe button and the notification icon. And give me a like too, and that'll let you know when I'm putting more videos of Sea of Thieves on YouTube. And there's going to be a few more videos, I can tell you. It's a refreshing game. It's a nice and light game. I think it's not totally bereft of comedy. I think, you know, it, it's, it's got... I think it's everything that a lot of... It's everything that I wanted from the game, to be honest with you. Yes, there are a few things that they're going to they're gonna tweak and fix, no doubt. Uh, and they will do with, with release and updates. But that's true of any multiplayer game. So anyway, before we go on with all that, let's talk about No Man's Sky's um, sort of like relationship to this. Personally, I don't see there's much of a comparison to be made, other than the fact it's an open world game, um, and their requests, and well, that's it. You can do a bit of exploration. That's that's all you can totally compare it to. And I've seen some reviews saying, oh well, you know, it's not very deep, it's not very engaging. They must be mad. I think this is great. You know, I mean, what are people expecting from games these days? And that begs the question. I mean, if you think, right, Rare has been around since the early 80s, where there was Jetpack, Attic Attack, Night Law, and then later on there was grabbed by the Ghoulies, and effectively everything that the Xbox One people were able to play on the Rare replay disc, that was Rare. Right? Rare first came about with Ultimate. Ultimate played the game on the Spectrum and the Commodore. Releasing Jetpack as their first game. And soon after Jetpack, there was Trans Am, and there was games like, um, let me see. Yeah, Jetpack, Trans Am, then there was Night Law, Saber Wolf, and the like. And, and the list goes on. Alienate. I mean, Night Law was the first ever isometric 3D game. Or 3D adventure game and was groundbreaking and all that done in 48k yes okay people didn't know any better and their expectations were lower and you know you need a computer these days the equivalent of what in the 90s would have been a Cray computer and viable for a moonshot um, to run some of these games but this runs on an Xbox and this isn't an Xbox X or Xbox S or whatever the new Xbox is this is a standard Xbox one first release and it plays perfectly fine perfectly fine no dramas there at all whatsoever so you know whereas some of the other games we were talking about no man's sky elite dangerous that sort of thing yes they're in a sort of like open world exploration journey but i don't think you can compare them it's like i don't think you can really compare no man's sky to elite dangerous two completely different games right this completely different game other than the fact that you can explore. And instead of space, you've got the sea. And that sea is a character all of its own, like I've mentioned on some of the other videos. You know, it, it's got a mood. It's got a funk to it. So, anyway, back to the game. Sea of Thieves. So I've stormed this stronghold. And, um, very good. There's cannons on the inside, barrels on the inside. Casks of explosive gunpowder and the like. Remember to stock up on those bananas. We're here for money. We're here for treasure. We're here to create reputation as a pirate. And whereas I think you could play this single player, I think you'd really find it hard. I mean, you'd have, you'd have a smaller ship for a start. You wouldn't have some of the larger galleons with all the firepower that comes with it. But then if you, you know, you'd have a more maneuverable sloop 
with a lighter hand. Let's face it, you want a nice old big ship, don't you, you know? Nice big pirate galleon to go roaring around the seas in. And also playing with friends, it's good. It's good to talk. And, you know, the entire multiplayer experience on it, I think is great. I mean, if I'm to be a bit critical, some of the loading times of the games in between the set sequences are a little bit, I don't know, a little bit long, you know? But that could be the fact that this is indeed, like I mentioned, a first-gen Xbox. Um, it's not benef benefiting from any of this SSD hard drives that you could possibly start retrofitting SSD external hard drives. You know, who knows? I mean, the product roadmap for Xbox is cloudy, I think, at best. But like on PC, you would benefit from all that. And this game is truly cross-play between Xbox One and PC. Cross-play being that you can play with or against your friends whether they be on the Xbox or on the PC. And this has been sort of like the Shangri-La, really, of, of uh, people who have an awful lot of these games that are released across platforms. For example, Elite Dangerous. Again, you all know I play Elite Dangerous. You can't do that yet. So frustrating. Because um, so many of the community say, oh, I'm on Xbox, do you play? Well, I haven't got Elite on the Xbox. I've got it on the PC. Um, you know, and, and graphically, I think it's, it's really good on the PC. I haven't seen it on the Xbox. It won't be that much of a difference, no doubt. Uh, but with some of the updates, have been graphical of late. But with this game, you know, with the exception of linking up to the Playstations, and that's because it's an Xbox Microsoft exclusive. It's going to be a Microsoft exclusive, not just an Xbox exclusive, because it's generally available on Windows 10 as well. Or Windows 10. Um, you know, it really is going to open up the frontiers of gaming. And I think if you look at how social gaming has become now, what with internet speeds and the like, and voice over IP so you can talk to your crew in real time, you know, gaming has changed a hell of a lot in regards to where it is. Now, where will it go next? Everyone's been saying about augmented reality. I don't really see that as being that much of a game changer to be honest um, that total immersive experience of virtual reality and augmented reality I don't know I don't think it's there yet and the rig you're going to have to run it on is, is going to be immense in fact PlayStation uh, when the PlayStation CEOs was quoted as saying virtual reality oh don't worry about that and they make it they've got a huge sort of like um, investment in, in virtual reality with their Sony headset uh, but in, you know, in, in respect to this, it would be interesting to see if, if there was a VR aspect to come out a little bit later, or if there indeed there was a Sea of Thieves 2. Who knows? So, going back to the Galleon here, you can obviously restock, you can bail out, you can get more cannonballs, you can get bananas, which will give you increase your health. As you can see, I've had quite a pasting off that skeletal horde at the moment. And also you can then go and give them a thrashing with the cannons as well. The ship also has a weapons locker where you can get a musket or your big blunderbuss. Different swords and the like. But I think... No, we've got a few more skeletons to see off here now before we can get into that central structure. Now these black ones are a bit tougher, I found in the, the general run of the mill. And he's eating a banana. What's the skeleton doing eating a banana? I'm not sure how I feel about this. Skeletons eating bananas are recharging their health. Great for game AI and the like. And the AI on this, I mean they're tough. If they're tough skeletons. Because then again, you don't want it to be a walkover, do you? And if you're playing with friends, if it's a walkover, you're going to lose player engagement. You want it to be a challenge. And getting that challenge just right, I think, um, Rare should be applauded for that. I really do think they should be applauded for this. And the sea having its own character of its own, its own mood. I mean, look at it now, you know, it's cha completely changed colour. 
I know I've seen off all the general skeletons. The skeletal stronghold boss has come out. And um, this guy has got a very elaborate plumage on his hat. And he's got several guards. So the plan here is going to be to get those guards dispatched. And once they have been, take him out. Once they've taken him out, and get to his swag. So there's no, you know, there's, there's no doubting which guy here is the captain. I do wish now I had a bigger rifle. So while my teammates are trying in vain to take out some of the other skeletal guards, there's no getting away from it. I'm going to have to get in there and go hand to hand out the and again, that's another good way of them getting to engage with the game. But you're going to have to know how to block as well as trash with that cutlass. So we're thinning out the ranks of these guards. My crew have been dying off and have been respawning back on the ship. We're going through the Ferry of the Damned experience. He's nearly gone. Yep, and he's gone. Damn it. Absolutely fantastic. Quite a good experience. Not too difficult, not too hard. This was the first stronghold I went to. I expect the difficulty to raise, you know, as you progress through the game. But here is the stronghold's treasure room. You've got explosive gunpowder. You've got chests. You've got the skull. And the like. Oh, I just blow myself up. So off to the Ferry of the Damned it is then. And this is a really good sequence. You know you've got that St. Elmo's Fire green glow emanating at a certain aspects of the ship. I mean, you don't want to be, you don't want to be looking at this too often, but it is a good you know, game reset, respawn sequence. And you can't just bang in through the door and go. You have to wait a certain period. If there was only a time to say, okay, you've got to wait a little bit before you, know, you can go back. But you do think, well, is it working? Is it okay? Can I get through that door? You know, you are left thinking, oh, has the game crashed? Which is not beyond the limits of the doubt. And I guess I mentioned in one of my other videos that... Um, on the first day, they might have got the scaling of the amount of people who were playing this online uh, were because the servers had crashed. People couldn't get on. Um, and that was unfortunate. And it did take a little bit of the shine off the game. So while my people are out there pillaging the stronghold, I've got my bucket in my hand. So I'm going to climb in that cannon now and get shot directly across to the doorway. And that's a great way of doing it. And my crewmates have already started picking up the chests and the like. So I've been Ricardo, this has been Sea of Thieves. Thanks very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. There'll be more Sea of Thieves videos coming really soon. Um, I've got a bit of time to do some this weekend, so we'll get some of those out. Let me know what you think. What do you think of Sea of Thieves? Will you be getting it? See you soon.